Hey guys, welcome to Books Are Sick. I am Nick, and today we're going to go through what I read in March and what I'm reading in April. I already kind of did a video on the books that I was reading in March, so I'm going to go through those really, really quickly, and then we will get into my April reads. Looking forward to April. March was a great month. Let's jump into that real, real quick here. The first one was Annihilation. Annihilation was a big surprise. I don't read a lot of sci-fi, and so I wasn't expecting to love this, and I loved it completely hooked from the first page. I needed to know what happened. Read this in about a day. If you don't read a lot of sci-fi, Annihilation was a really good time. I want to get the other ones. I hear that they are also a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, really, really good. I also read Sula by Toni Morrison. I loved Sula. I think I might put the bluest eye above this one, but I mean, that's it's a silly comparison. This was a truly magnificent book. Very heavy, very you know, will make you queasy, so bear that in mind if you're going to try and read it, but beautiful, beautiful book. I read So Late in the Day by Claire Keegan. I love Claire Keegan, as you know. I It's going to be hard to get to the Foster and Small Things Like These levels. Those two books I are two of my favorite books that I've ever read. This doesn't quite hit that level. Still an enjoyable read. It will only take you like 30, 40 minutes to get through. It's worth it. I read We've Always Lived in the Castle by Shrew. <clears throat> I've read We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This was really fun. Ghost story, haunted house uh, elements to it. I think, I don't know why I'm playing, doing the comparison thing. I would probably put Haunting of Hill House above this one. However, don't let that, that me saying that deter you. This was a lot of fun to read. If you like all those classic horror feelings that you get when you read an old horror book, this will fulfill you for sure. I read The Metamorphosis by Kafka. Loved this as my first Kafka read. Truly a create one of the most creative stories I've ever read that tries to relay inner struggle. Like it really is about a man that wakes up as a bug. I've talked about it a nauseating amount of times now. If you have a free two hours, read Metamorphosis. It is it is amazing. I'll be thinking about that book for the rest of my life. I read The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Shocking to some people that I had not read this yet. I really, really enjoyed it. It's about a man named Jay Gatsby who throws these elaborate parties. We don't really know why. He's always kind of alone at them, kind of this mysterious dude. He's, you know, he wants something that he can't have, but he's, it's, it's just, it was really good. Really, really enjoyable. Loved all the characters. Loved the story. Just a surprisingly good time. Of Mice and Men, I read by Steinbeck. And this was, this this is my first Steinbeck. And it, uh, ugh. Ah, oh, it was so good. Similarly to Claire Keegan, the emotional punch that this has in such a short amount of time is mind-boggling. I don't know how writers do this. You know, I the Lenny, like Lenny and George, I, I was Lenny, like Lenny. Ah, oh, anyway, of Mice and Men, fantastic. Of course, Red Cujo. This was the this was the uh, sick book club book for this month. Cujo. Been putting this one off for a long time because I didn't think I was going to love it, and I absolutely thought it was delightful. So much more going on in the story than I had anticipated. I thought it was just going to be a dog, badly trained dog, just like, ah, look at me. And the people are like, oh no. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot going on, a lot of storylines. Didn't realize that Cujo is such a likable character. I, I've, I probably felt the most bad for Cujo. You know, I love Cujo because I didn't realize that it's just about a dog that gets rabies and like just can't like we have the uh, like a like a first person narrative of Cujo and like he doesn't understand what's happening to him. And it's really sad, actually. But uh, anyways, Cujo was Cujo was great. And I'm also I haven't finished this one yet, but I'm reading The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. It is really good. Really heavy. It kind of reads like you're listening to your grandpa tell you a bunch of war stories that he probably shouldn't be telling you. Because it is kind of chopped up like that, it's it's not it's it's not a very fluid story. It's a bunch of kind of random stories. It's it's a little hard for me to fully sink into it as much as I would typically like to do with a book, but it is um it is quite fantastic. And I'll got about 40 pages left on that. So that'll hopefully be done this week at some point. Now Let's get into April. April is going to be exciting. I've got them here. I don't know if you can see that top one there. Uh, so I'll get this one out of the way first. So the sick book club book for this month is going to be The Road by Cormac McCarthy. Last month was Cujo. This month is The Road. I think probably the sick book club is going to primarily focus on pretty heavy novels, <laughs> which I'm totally cool. They're they're usually my favorite. So The Road is going to be this month's book. I started this one last night, got about 100 pages in. It was really hard to put down. 
You know, I know that's a cliche thing to say when you're talking about books, but I was I was totally invested in this, and the writing is something else. It is very hard to put into words how beautiful this writing is, and it's interesting because the dialogue in this book is very, very plain, very like two three word sentences mixed with this vivid, beautiful description of what's going on. It's kind of jarring, but jarring in a good way, and I'm really, really loving it. This is my first Cormac book, so uh, yeah, pretty excited to keep going with this one. I would imagine I might be through this one this week because it. I just want to keep reading it right now. It's one of those books. If you'd like to join the Sick Book Club book, it's I host it through Patreon. The link will be down below, but no pressure to join. I'll uh, keep you updated on it here as well. So anyways, The Road. Ah, I don't know what my next Cormac novel is going to be after that one. I kind of want to read the No Country for Old Men. My chair is kind of breaking, and so it keeps, like, sinking. Oh, God, I hate that. Uh, but I – what was I saying? Oh, No Country for Old Men is, like, one of my favorite movies ever. I've seen that movie an insane amount of times. I just absolutely love it. I think it's one of the most brilliant movies ever made. And so I should probably read that book, and I think I will. So after The Road, I think I'll go No Country. And then uh, I've got All the Pretty Horses – and I also have Blood Meridian. I tried to read Blood Meridian once, and it was uh, it was hard. But this was back when I wasn't reading. You know, I was just randomly like, I should read Blood Meridian by Cormac, because I think that's, like, super impressive. And I got 20 pages in, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and, like, threw it behind me. Oh, my chair. Okay, here we go. Ah, so, speaking of book clubs, we also have... I don't know... I don't know the rules of YouTube, so I'm just going to, like... I, I, I know this is kind of kind of weird i'm just gonna like hide the name there but this is irish chang's this is irish chang's book on the nanking massacre and i'm actually doing this for another book club that is uh hosted by michael kist over on tiktok really cool dude history superhuman <laughs> i would say he reads a lot of history books which is why i'm really interested in joining his book club and learning a little bit more about history because i love history and this is uh, again about the nanking massacre which i don't really know a lot about i've started this one as well and it is already quite um man it is I, it's gonna blow my mind because I, I i didn't really i like I, I knew of nanking but i didn't really know of the massacre at all and it's insane guys like i, I won't, go, won't go too far into it but if you're interested please join the history sickos book club over that he hosts um that's going to be a really really heavy one which is kind of why it inspired me to uh throw a fluffy book into my april we reads because the three other books i have for april are quite a lot the next one is up <laughs> i don't know <sighs> it's been a long weekend okay it's been a long weekend it's tuesday we got this. It's another short week and then another long weekend this weekend because the eclipse is on Monday. So our kids have Monday off. So another three-day weekend and then another four-day week, which is a short week after that. <laughs> We're fine. We got this. The Grapes of Wrath by Steinbeck. As I mentioned earlier, I loved Of Mice and Men so much. So I'm really excited to get into another Steinbeck right away. So I picked up the grapes, grapes of Wrath. A lot of people were saying um, to go East of Eden. And I, my wife actually has a copy of East of Eden. And I really want to read that. But I don't know why the Grapes of Wrath is just kind of pulling me in. And I, I think I'm going to read the Grapes of Wrath. Well, I am going to read the Grapes of Wrath before East of Eden. And maybe I'll throw East of Eden in next month's uh, reads. April, May. That will be May. May. Wow. Already getting to May. Anyways, Steinbeck. What else does he have? He's got The Grapes of Wrath, East of Eden, Of Mice and Men. I'm sure he has a bunch of other really popular ones that are not hitting me right now. I want to say those three are probably his most popular, though. Am I right in saying that? I might be wrong. But really looking forward to this. I really like these Penguins classics that they have that they did of this one, too. They have one for Of Mice and Men, too, that looks fantastic. I couldn't find it. But uh, anyway, I actually kind of like the cover of, of Mice and Men that I have. Moving on, we got... This is the fluffy one. And then I've got a few others that I'm still reading. And then I have like a stretch goal book for, for April as well, if I get through all of these. So my cozy kind of pick-me-up book is going to be The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. This is, from everyone that I've heard that's read it, just a truly, truly fun, good time. And I can't wait for it. You know, it's a grumpy sunshine book, witches, romance, quirky family... I, I just, ah, <laughs> I can't wait for it. I, it's, it's completely different from the other three books that I'm reading this month, which I actually kind of like. And so that is going to be the fourth book for the month. 
again, pumped for it. Let me know if you guys have read this one, because, uh, uh, you know, if you haven't read it and you want to join along with me, I would love that. <laughs> okay, so the other book that, so I've got a, one of these is not going to be very surprising. I am still going through Plugging Through the Winners by Frederick Bachman. It's really long. This is a really long book for what it is. And I, it's just taken me a little while to jump back in and get to it. But I do fully intend to finish that this month. And it is good. I don't want my reviews on this book to be to put people off. It is good. I just overloaded myself with Beartown and kind of uh, needed to take a break. But really, really good. Going to finish that one in April. And my stretch goal, if I get through all of these and I'm like, oh, like I can, I can throw another book in. I what I was thinking, Tress of the Emerald Sea, because I think that's the only book in March that I didn't get to that I said I was going to. However, I think I'm going to put off Tress because now I've got a new burning desire to get back into the um, the um, Stormlight Archive. It's not a Stormlight uh, Stormlight Archive book that I've picked as my stretch goal. That would be insane. That needs to be a dedicated book for a month. Um, my stretch goal. I'll just get this this out of the way first. Oh, yeah. uh, is the Secret History by Donna Tart. This was another one that was on up for the uh for this month's sick book club book didn't make it but it got really really close i really want to read this so i'm if, if i can get through all of these books i'm going to read this this month as well if i don't i'll probably re-add it to the poll for may's selection so i don't really know what to do but uh that will be my stretch goal book again back to the stormlight archive i've just got i've got a reignited desire to to continue on with the stormlight archive i've only read the way of kings and words of radiance i believe is the next one and i just hear that that is like the greatest book of all time <laughs> and you know it, it's i just i i don't know what i can't i may, must have seen like a, a video or something about the stormlight archive that just has reignited the spark to get back into it because the last few days that's all i can think about is just getting back into stormlight so i think i'm going to do that pretty soon i want to grab a copy of it that is not the mass market i have a mass market paperback of it but it's so thick i kind of i actually like i know i could just break the crap out of it and maybe i should just do that but i think i'm gonna get a proper book of it to read um you know that will match my uh the way of kings one that i have anywho that's neither here nor there How, hope you're having a great life and a, a great uh existence on this planet you know I don't think many of us are, but uh, <laughs> I hope that you are. And that is my March reads, and th these are my April reads. Let me know what you think. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Again, again if you want to join the Sick Book Club, the link will be down below. Uh, and I, uh, you just, you're just, thank you so much. You know what I mean? Love you so much. <laughs> Bye.